Hey folks, it's your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler coming to you here on this Friday afternoon for a gardener's workshop live from the farm. And um, I'm really glad to be here with you because, you know, y'all, we're just having the best fall ever weather here in Virginia. And this does not happen very often. Um, we are really experiencing some great weather and it's just making, you know, fall farming for me because, you know, we are, we've realized just how significant this season is and how it impacts spring. Um, and it just makes it so much easier when mother nature cooperates. So welcome everybody. And um, if we've never met before, uh, my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler and I'm with the Gardener's Workshop Farm or thegardenersworkshop.com. Um, we started out as a flower farm over 20, um, 23 years ago and it's just kind of evolved into a whole lot of things. So we grow a gigantic cutting garden. We have an online learning center and we have an online garden shop where we only offer and sell the things that I use. Um, you don't have to make a lot of different choices between things. We only sell the ones that I actually um, use. And so I just welcome everybody here from wherever you are in the world. And remember, if you are one of our online course students, any, any of them, um, just remember to comment and use your little sunflower emoji. We love seeing our students here and that identifies you to other students. Um, and we just really appreciate everybody um, doing that because it really connects me as well. Um, so thank you so much. So Paige is saying she's listening to her class and hello, Maine. So friends, I have several things I wanna talk about, you know, and silly me. Earlier today, as I was thinking about, you know, what am I gonna talk about tonight? I thought, oh, well, I'll sit out in the swing with the camera on the garden. Well, y'all, it is pitch dark outside. I mean, I'm still not, not only is Tucker's stomach still on the old time, Eastern Daylight Savings time, I am too, apparently, because I didn't even realize it was gonna be dark outside. Um, so anyway, it's pitch black out there. So I wanna um, just do a little couple of housekeeping things first. Um, first and foremost, if you have not gotten the PDF that I made, and it's called All Things Cool Flowers, and it lists to date all of my cool flower resources, because I mean, there are a couple, three different webinars, there's blogs, there's podcasts, um, there's a whole lot of stuff and resources to help you. Um, and if you don't have that, I put it at the head of here. So you can really um, get your game on. Because one of the things that I really wanna talk about today is that spring is now, y'all. Your spring success or failure is based on what you did in fall, for real. I mean, I'm not talking just cool flowers, that's everything. You know, we don't plant a lot of bulbs here, but if you're planting bulbs, now is the time to get busy doing that, right? Um, so I see we've got a lot of sunflowers going by here. Um, and, you know, if you aren't sure, so the first thing I was gonna say out of the gate here is before we start talking about cool flowers, so I just wanna do that right now, who's still cutting sunflowers? We still have people harvesting those sunflowers that we all kept pushing everybody um, to keep planting that once a week succession of sunflowers. So if I would have kept on, we quit the third week in September, I think it was. If we'd have continued, we would still have sunflowers today. We still haven't had a hard frost. Um, and sunflowers will take a little frost. I've been known to run out and throw a row cover over them to protect them from that. Um, so what I wanna say is mark it on your calendar for next year. Just when did you stop planting sunflowers and how long should you, and mark on the weeks of how many more weeks should you add on. It's so hard to remember this next year, y'all but you have to write it down on your calendar. And that brings me to another. You wanna know what I told Suzanne today? 
Um, you know, we live off of that giant wall ca calendar. The two by four squares is the brain of this, of this farm. It tells us when to plant, I mean, when to start seeds, when to order seeds, what we've harvested. I mean, it's just a super, I'm a terrible journaler, y'all. I'm a terrible record keeper. And that calendar, I think I started using it nine years ago, changed my farming and gardening life. And I asked Suzanne today, what would y'all think if um, we printed a big wall calendar that had my little tidbits on there about what you should be potentially doing? Of course, um, we only ship to the lower 48 states, so we don't have to worry about people in other countries. Um, I mean, would that not be awesome? Like, this is when you should be planning your garden. This is when you should be thinking about ordering fall seeds. Oh, uh, so I mean, it won't happen for the year 2022. I can tell you that. Um, but we're talking about potentially doing that, and that's that big jumbo wall calendar. Um, that, I mean, it just, that kind of got born this morning. Suzanne and I are alone on Fridays at the Fulfillment Center to work through things that need our attention and brainstorm. I mean, we ordered, um, we ordered all kinds of good stuff today. Um, and new, you know, how we're always putting swag in our boxes. We ordered the coasters again today. Um, and we ordered masks for our staff. Wait till y'all see them. If you're still wearing masks where you are, you might want one. We're not, we don't know that we, um, will be selling them, but maybe we would if enough people asked for them. Um, but anyway, they're going to have our sunflowers all over them and our little bee. Um, so anyway, all right. So the sunflower thing, now is the time to mark your calendar, gang. Um, and if you, so for us, on my calendar, I write on Sundays is the, the day that I write the sunflower. The, the things that we start every single week, typically in plug trays, because it's usually sunflowers, um, and sometimes it would be millet, and it was just easier for all of those that they all went in plug trays. That's what I'd write on Sunday. So I would go in on Sunday and start writing. It's like, all right, I started, you know, way late last year. I'm just pretending like I'm one of y'all. I started way late last year. So if she's saying that she starts three to four weeks before my last spring frost, you know, think about that. You need to go into your calendar and write that down. Um, and so, you know, these are the things that when you're suffering from an issue, now is the time to prevent yourself from doing it next year. And writing, um, writing your information um, when it's hot on your mind will really... Um, that's the only way you're ever going to fix it, or you're just going to make the same mistake again last year. That's the old motto. If you just keep doing the same thing over and over, nothing's ever going to change. Um, so check that out, and I know that we have people. I've been getting DMs is how I know. People are still harvesting sunflowers, so that is just really, really awesome. And so I'm wondering who's got all their cool flowers in. Well, if you can see the trays sitting over there, you can guess who doesn't. Um, those three trays are the end of the wagon, though. Um, all of our primary cool flowers are in. These are trays of things that we restarted for whatever reason. Some Sweet William and two trays of Godisha. And um, those will be going in probably not next week, maybe the week after um, or the end of next week. And um, it's just really, really feels good to be sitting here um, knowing that our cool flower garden is 98% planted. The direct seeded stuff is up and this big. The beds are full, um, except for the holes that we left for this. Um, and I have to tell you this, so I was right before this went on, I was helping Stevie unload. Um, what do you, what does a plumber bring home when you tell him you need a second fire pit? We're having a little thing here tomorrow night for our, our church. And I said, we need to have a second fire pit. People will be too ganged around it. You know, we're trying to keep people a little bit distanced anyway. And um, so he brought home um, the, the same thing that our other fire pit is made out of, a manhole ring. You know, the ring that the top fits down in and a concrete 
drain pipe that's like 30 inches in diameter. So I was helping him unload that with the tractor. And y'all, you should smell the tuberoses outside. You know, our tuberoses are still, we, le we winter ours over. Um, and they are absolutely, um, I mean, the sweet smell walking across our yard in the dark just took my breath away. Um, so having my cool flowers in for once, pretty much on time, was really, really great. And um, the good dishes are pretty easy, Paige. They are excellent germinators. Um, so, and if you're wondering about whether you're too late or not, you need to check out the, the All Things Cool Flowers. And I would recommend that you watch um, first to resolve that problem, um, the Cool Season Flower Chronicles, which that's actually a video series that's on my blog. Um, but it's on that list, so you'll have all of them. You can just click on it. Um, so the Cool Season Flower Chronicles is five videos. They're 30 minutes or less, and one of them really goes into detail about figuring out what's too late and um, all that good stuff. So cover crop. Our cover crop looks amazing. This is just the best year, y'all. Um, and this just does not happen, so I'm having to waller in it a little bit more than usual. Um, our crimson clover is just beautiful. Our sun hemp, which is a warm season cover crop, that's that like 12 foot tall stuff with the yellow flower that we have out there. It's a warm season tender legume. Um, and we haven't mowed it. Our, bur our dog and the birds are having way too much enjoyment in it for us to cut it down. Um, so I don't know what we're gonna do about that. But we actually got um, our cool season cover crops in also on time. And friends, I wanna just tell you, cause I've got, I got a couple of questions about this today. Um, when you, to be successful with cover crop, there's just a couple of things you have to do. And I missed them. For years, I can't tell you how much cover crop seed I bought and tossed, you know, put it out and then never really got a, a stand of cover crop. And I know now all the things I was doing wrong. Um, the number one thing is you plant cool season when you're heading into the cold weather and you plant warm season when you're in the warm weather. Um, and my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, really does have a couple of pages about even how home gardeners can incorporate and the two recommended. Um, I recommend for anybody until they are a seasoned farmer with equipment and really have it all worked out. I only recommend you grow crimson clover in the fall and winter and buckwheat during the summer. Other cover crops are a little bit more complicated. The timing, the incorporating them. What happens if you don't incorporate them on time? Um, so, Knowing which way, what you need to plant is first. The second thing is, is I always try to plant cover crop when rain is in the forecast and imminent. Because it's, I mean, if you're farming, you're not going to water it. You know, you have to really depend on rain. And if you plant your seed and it doesn't rain for 10 days, um, guess what does grow without rain really well? Weeds. So your weeds will get a jump on your cover crop and it defeats your whole purpose, right? So planting that cover crop with a little bit of forethought about when is the rain coming um, is just a really big, I mean, it's a huge difference. We see such a difference in um, the coverage of our cover crops and the less weed pressure um, because what can happen is if the weeds get a little ahead of the cover crop, those weeds will go on to make seed and perpetuate and make more problems. Um, the other thing is, is that cover crop seed needs to be covered with soil to really have strong, good germination. Um, and you can do that in a couple of ways. If you don't, if you're doing no-till and you have beds, you know, you pull a, a garden rake or a bed rake over it just enough to just throw a little bit of soil around. You want about a half an inch of soil on top of those seeds. When that happens, I mean, first off, the birds don't typically get them as easily, get the seed as easily, and they germinate so much better, y'all. Um, and, you know, when you follow those, and then the other thing I would say is when you're planting cover crop, 
you need to be planting it into a pretty clean bed. And that is up to you how you get a clean bed. Whether if you're a no-till, that could mean using a silage tarp to extinguish everything there. Then you plant your cover crop, rake it in. Um, and the weed seeds on the surface should have been killed by the cover crop and the heat. Um, if you're a tilling person, you know, to till and immediately plant your cover crop. We are what we call low-till people. Um, you know, I do till some areas of my farm, but we do it minimally by a long shot. Um, I often, I'm almost always thinking, oh, you probably should have gone over that again, but I would rather tilt towards low till than, no, than too much tillage. Um, so you disturb the soil by tilling or whatever. You plant your seed and then you either, um, again, till very shallowly just to stir up the soil to cover it. Um, and if you do that with rain coming, you'll have great success. Um, but if that seed sits out there for days and doesn't germinate because it's hot and you planted cool season, you know what I mean? It's just like planting plants, y'all. You have to plant the cover crop into the season. Um, there is also on my blog, Field and Garden, over at thegardenersworkshop.com, Go to thegardenersworkshop.com, go to the Learning Center, and go to Field and Garden. Um, and there is a cover crop live that I did. It's over an hour long, and I only talk about cover cropping. Um, and you can check that out if you need to learn more about cover cropping. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, oops, sorry, y'all, my feet, um, is mulching. So is anybody else collecting bags of leaves? We are collect. We are starting to collect. I'm seeing them show up everywhere. We don't really start going out and foraging for bags of leaves until we have big piles out. So for those of you that aren't familiar, so I'm an urban farmer. I'm in the middle of the city. Um, I'm literally the last standing farmer in what was once a very large Mennonite farming community. And um, what this means is I don't have to go over a mile from my farm. I mean, I'm literally surrounded in houses and neighborhoods. Um, so I can go within a mile or much less than that, actually, and bring home thousands of bags of leaves. And that's what we do. And um, we literally primarily use them for mulch in our pathways, um, in our fall planted garden. And then we also use it to fill cages to make leaf mold. Um, and I do talk about that in Vegetables Love Flowers, about super easy how to do it, y'all. Everybody should be making, everybody should have leaf mold cages on their farm or garden. Um, you just put them back in a shady corner, fill it, um, fill the thing with as many leaves as you can, and it takes a lot of leaves, and then just leave it for 18 months. That's what we do. You don't turn it, you don't do anything. You just leave it alone, and in 18 months, you will have garden gold. It's what, what, what create, what is created in there is what the forest floor. Think of these deep undisturbed floor, floors that you see these great images of that, you know, have a brook trickling and, you know, I mean, just, and ferns growing around. And when you start rooting around, it's like just this deep, wonderful stuff. Well, that's what you're making when you make leaf mold. Um, and it is garden medicine in my opinion. Um, so we collect leaves to mulch the pathways of our fall planted garden. Um, in the summertime, we just let whatever grows pop up and we mow it um, because we don't have leaves available. We don't ever stockpile bags of leaves because um, you don't wanna attract rodents or ants. I mean, you can get some serious ant colonies living because think about between bags of leaves, the crevices and all that. So we don't ever, we bring them home. They're immediately dumped into our pathways. We don't mulch them. We don't chop them. Um, then in spring, when we're harvesting and um, working in those spring gardens, you know, stripping the flowers out in the garden, we're like creating this amazing magic of lasagna in the pathways, and then we're stomping all over it, going in and out, and it just pulverizes it. Um, and then we can either incorporate it, or it just depends on what style of farming you do, but it just makes for a wonderful scene in the garden, not to mention all the beneficial creatures. The ground beetles, the frogs, the turtles, all those guys that eat all the bad bugs, and people often say to me, don't you have a lot of slug problem? We don't have any slug problems. Um, 
we just don't have slugs. And why is that? Because we encourage their predators. Their predators are the ones that are also living in that leaf litter. Um, birds, we invite tons of birds into our garden by having water available. Um, we use upside down trash can lids and now is a great time of year to do that, especially if it's not raining a lot where you are. Um, water really brings birds in. Birds, particularly when they have fledged, you have babies. I mean, they're, um, I'm sorry, my gate is opening. I, do, I have the door open, it's so nice outside and it scared me, my dog is inside. Um, Sorry, that was a brain mat. We always say to each other, Gates, I need to go out the gate. Where's the dog? And he didn't do it because he knew I was live. Um, anyway, sorry. So water brings in birds to your garden that you've never seen. Birds in the spring and summer, when they have babies, they're almost, their entire diet is insects. You want these guys in your garden. Um, and that leaf litter, I mean, I, I was, forget, oh, I was talking to my alumni last night in my closed Facebook group, and I was telling them that when we're dumping leaves, we have an audience. We have robins lining the fences. The eastern bluebirds are up in the trees. They're all just like waiting for us to finish and get the heck out of there so they can come leaf through it. And, you know, native sparrows, um, I mean, they are such a noisy bunch, and that's, they're rooting around. They're out there jumping around in the leaves, just scattering them, looking for insects. Um, so don't be afraid of using leaves. Um, I also wanted to say, um, I meant to say this at the beginning, but I'll say it now. Next Saturday, November 20th, at from 10 to 12, I'm going to be right here on Facebook Live. We are having our Christmas shopping show. For two hours, I will be up at the Fulfillment Center with Rhonda, Jessica, um, our marketing coordinator and our student ambassador, who actually lives in Kansas, um, will be helping us um, virtually. And I'm going to be showing you guys the stuff that is just is my favorite things. Everything in my store is my favorite thing, y'all, because we only sell it because I use it. But I'm going to talk to you about how I use stuff, um, great Christmas gifts, and normally we do this in December, but we're kind of afraid this year because of the shipping delays um, that we wanted to have it early enough that gives time for everybody to order and get their shipments. We're going to have hourly specials. I'll be signing books live. You know, if you buy a book during that two hours and ask me to personalize it, we can talk about it while I do it. And um, it'll just really be a lot. It was a ton of fun last year. I think I wore reindeer antlers last year. It was really, really fun and kind of get us all in the spirit and let's get over this humdrum downer stuff, you know? I mean, we just have to make the best out of what we've got. So next Saturday right here on Facebook, and y'all are all Facebook users, obviously, right? So I would love to see you there. Um, plus, oh my gosh, we have such a big week. This Friday, November 19th, um, Steve and Gretel Adams of Sunny Meadow Flower Farm, if you do not follow them on Instagram, um, you have got to um, follow them. They do the most amazing videos and posting over there, and they do it on Facebook too, but they do more in Instagram. Y'all, they have 18 hoop and greenhouses. They grow so many flowers, you just can't even believe it. Anyway, they do a course with us. We're so honored. Um, their course, like all the rest of our big courses, only enrolls once a year, and that opens on Friday for five days. Grow and cut flowers in hoop and greenhouses. Um, they are the cutest couple. They are amazing co-teachers. I mean, it's like they breathe each other's air. I mean, one of them will speak half and the rest, the other one finishes it. It really makes for amazing. Steve is um, the thinker, the idea maker, and Gretel is the part that helps it make it all happen. Um, and they are so innovative and so smart. And they start, they started at ground zero. And that course um, starts you out with the very basic and shows you where you can go. So check it out over on thegardenersworkshop.com and that opens on Friday. And I wanted to show you guys the wreath that Bobo and Christine made. And I'll show you my babies. Um, so let's just do that right now. Oop, let me take you out of this. And, oh man, my foot's killing me, y'all. All right, first, let's look at this wreath. So I asked, because of my
my little get together here tomorrow night. I asked Bobo and Christine to dress up. This is just a grapevine wreath underneath here. And I said, make a wreath for our door. And y'all, it is the sweetest thing ever. So I'll get up close so you can see. I mean, they just forged. This is the hyacinth bean vine. You can find that seed. That's the only cultivated thing on here. Well, that's not true. Um, we start, that's a vine that we grow from seed. This is southern wax myrtle. This is um, Virginia creeper. And it's wilty, but it still looks good from a distance, right? Then there's some service berries in here. Um, there's gumpfrina, actually, which this little grapevine wreath that's behind here um, actually had gumpfrina on it, and then they just piled more stuff on. This is one of the rudbeckias. I think that's the um, cut leaf rudbeckia. I'm not sure. But, I mean, isn't it just, this is just stuff, stuff from our, our native border in our yard, and I bet you could do the very same thing. Um, and we have eucalyptus, but it wasn't dry enough yet to actually be used. So um, I just love this vine. And, you know, this is the way you practice. And this is the time of year, right, when you're ready to practice. So look at, look at some cool flowers. So this is Sweet William. Um, what does this look right here? This was started October 21st. And it's sweet William purple. This is there. It's Amazon, which is primarily what we grow. And this is what Dianthus does. It gets this long little neck and it flops over, but that's okay. Um, so we kind of forgot to start sweet William for our garden out there. Um, so we got that in late. And then here is Godisha. So this is younger. This is October 28th and this is October 21st. So you can see Godisha, see how it kind of goes crazy under there a little bit? Um, it got wind blown day before yesterday, um, and so it'll be fine, but it's not quite big enough. But we're going to pinch this, so I'll show you right where I'm going to pinch it. So you see where I pinched it right above? And look, what's already there. Can y'all see that? I'm trying to get it to focus. It's already got little shoots coming up. So we're going to pinch this Godisha. We already have some Godisha growing out there. And then after I planted it, somebody wrote how wonderful it does pinch. So I thought, well, let's start some more. I mean, look at this. I will pinch 50% of these. I should get the scissors, but look at that. Look at those little, those little shoots are just going to take right off. So Godisha is, to me, um is really a really delicate, it's almost like a single Lysianthus is what it kind of looks like. All right, y'all, so I'm, I'm going to look through at your questions now. Let me put this phone back in here. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going back to the top. Well, hello, Australia. Yeah, a lot of people are having wind and rain. I mean, it is just so interesting um, that this is really unusual for us to have such a great fall. So if you're not having such a great fall, maybe next year. Hi, Lisa. Listening to the cover crop class while f filling my bags, loving the class. Oh, Pad Page, thank you so much for saying that. Hello from Zone 10A, San Francisco, 70 degrees. Holy cow. Yeah, so it wasn't 70 here today, but it was like mid-60s, maybe low 60s, and it was delightful, um, even though I had to work inside most of the day. And I see all those sunflowers. Sunflowers, y'all, for anybody that doesn't know, um, those are our students from any of our online courses. We love to know who you are. Um, yeah, Daniel, I know who you're ready for spring. Hello from stormy, wet Maine. I will watch as long as I have power. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, you know that we finally got a, 
a whole house generator and um, I can't wait for the power to go out now. It's like we're going to test it out, right? I'm in the same zone 17 miles outside of New York City. How should I succession plan? Karen, it is all based on your first and last frost dates. And if you have a struggle and can't quite wrap your head around succession planting, um, that's what the book Vegetables Love Flowers is really all about. It's about a three season cutting garden. And in addition to talking about it, it actually shows diagrams in the back. Um, and it is all about when your dates are and what you're planting. And I mean, so there's really no way to actually answer that for you. Oh, Wanda's back home in Alaska after a three-week vacation experiencing body shock. So she was down south in 80 degrees and now she's back in Alaska at zero where I'm sure she's happy to be. So I'm just looking to see if there's any questions on here. So if you're looking for that, um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't still have the, nope. I was gonna say I'll post the link again, um, but the link is gone from my paste right now. I posted at the head of this Facebook feed, which means after this is over and it takes it a few minutes to actually get posted, you can go back to this post and at the very top there's a link and that's where you can find the All Things Cool Flower PDF list and it has a bunch of resources. It's like you wanna put it in your email box and flag it um, so you have everything in one place. And I see that y'all are saying, do the cal calendar. Yeah, I think that, you know, regular calendars, um, I mean, I'm not interested in publishing a calendar that just has pretty images on it. I mean, that's, they're wonderful, but there's a bunch of those out there. But the big wall calendar, um, which we just got ours actually, Send us a list so we can mark it on ours. Yeah, well, that is actually part. I mean, people that are in flower farming school do get, they get a um, a planner of how, because see, what people don't understand, my planting schedule is probably very different than your planting schedule. Even though we could live in the same zone, it's all based on frost dates, y'all, and everybody's is pretty much different. Um, but that is one thing that flower farming school does include. Yeah, Jessica, I wished we could ship to Alaska too. And I tell you, we're having our website rebuilt again. We do that about every two years. I um, mean, it is so deep and complicated. Calcul figuring out shipping. Um, and that is one of the, that's one of the things on our wish list every time we rebuild is being able to ship um, to other states. And then of course, someday to Canada, we would hope. Yeah. Oh, Linda says she loves her coaster. We're getting them done a little bit. I asked them this time to put to add something to it because I love those coasters too. Yes to the mask. Yeah, I can't wait for the masks to come. Jessica, I have them ship my orders to Aurelia. That's right. So Wanda is in Alaska. And she says, I have them ship my orders to a relative in Washington, and she sent it up to me. Then I reimbursed her for postage. That is such a good idea, Wanda. I mean, yeah, it's just so very complicated, and it takes special additional software, and it's just nobody, I mean, who knew, right? Who knew? <laughs> Everything is so complicated, and the deeper and more complicated your website gets, the more glitches and issues that happen every time a security update happens, and I mean, it's just so much. I have such a different appreciation for these big companies that have these complex websites. I can't imagine. They have staffs of IT people. I have an IT person on staff. I have an IT company on retainer, which means I pay them a big chunk of money every month for them to be at our beck and call if we have a problem. And then we have developers, people that rebuild our website or that when Kelly, our in-house IT person, runs into a problem that she can't figure out, then she can go to them. I mean, it's incredibly deep and complicated because all it takes 
is an update to the website, which automatically happens because that's how you keep security up. And it malfunctions things over here. All of a sudden, pictures will disappear. I mean, y'all, it is crazy. If you think farming is crazy. I thought farming was like the hardest thing in the world. Not. <laughs> I'm just, can you give us a cool flower succession by zone? I don't know what you mean by that, but... um. I mean, in the back of the book, it tells you what winter hardiness zone cool flowers are hardy to, to know whether you are fall or very early spring or both. Um, and so that's what it's all about. And then, so any confusion, and there is a lot, there is a lot of confusion about cool flowers. And I totally understand it, y'all. I mean, it took me forever to get my head wrapped around it. And then I had to convince a publisher to believe me and that I wasn't a crazy person. The Cool Season Flower Chronicles, which you'll find on my blog at thegardenersworkshop.com, is five videos, and it addresses in each, it's a 30-minute video each. It was over a five-week period. It addresses these kinds of things that people just, it's like, I am not going to give you fish, y'all. I'm teaching you how to fish. You have to figure out for your zone and your frost dates when and what you're supposed to plant because that means every time a new flower ha comes around or one we find that's now a cool flower, you won't know when you're supposed to plant it. You've got to figure out the simple steps and that's all that the Cool Season Flower Chronicles is going to actually walk you through. So Yvonne says, yes, I still have been harvesting sunflowers and we have had two frosts just like that's exactly it. And in my opinion, sunflower seed is inexpensive enough that it's worth risking that you might not get them because the value of those flowers this late in the season is priceless. Priceless, especially if you're selling to florists. They just absolutely love them. Tina, hi, y'all. I am harvesting heirloom mums. Ah, oh, first grocery store sale today. Praying the freeze stays away until Thanksgiving. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Tina. Your first supermarket um, sale. That is so great. I'm giving you a high five. Um, that is just so awesome. All right, y'all. I'm just looking to see if we have any other questions. So, Gabrielle, is is it too late to plant cover crop? To cloak, plant clo uh, can't talk. Plant co clover. Clover is just like cool flowers. It really should be gotten in six to eight weeks before your first frost because it needs to have some heat to sprout, have a little bit of time to grow. You I mean you want it to go through winter as of at least a little plant that tall. Mine's about 10 inches. Um, so it just really, again, depends on when your frost date is. And if you, um, live down south, you may still be able to do it. Yes, leaves, please. Cool flowers in. Had a bit of trouble with some direct sown, heavy rain and grasshoppers, ugh. But for the most part, is a huge success thanks to so many like you willing to mentor others. Can't wait for spring. And you know, y'all, it just takes practice. It took me several years to really nail becoming a good direct sower. And as I became a better direct sower, I figured out there were some cool flowers that I was struggling with trying to start inside that really do better outside. Um, Orlea, white lace flower is one of them. Um, so yeah, it's all about just getting practice and doing it and you will get better and better. Tons of leaves and compost here, firefly larva over winter and leaves and eat slug babies. There you go, y'all. There, there are so many. Thank you, Kelly, for saying that. Um, there are so many creatures that eat the things that annoy us, but we have to give them what they need to live. And I could just go on and on about our native border is just coming to its own. We have so many creatures living here, birds of so many different varieties, uh, all eating stuff. And, I mean, you all, you just have to paint the picture and they will all come. No, actually, it's plastic, Kim. I haven't heard about your trash can lead idea. Metal, I'm guessing. No, actually, we use plastic. Um, and actually, we ordered some off of, you know where, the big A, uh, just trash can tops. You know, but what we were always doing is we rarely use trash can tops. We'd buy big round, you know, 55-gallon trash cans. Um, and 
never use the tops, and that's what I would use. Um, so I actually prefer the plastic ones. Um, they've never really cracked. I don't know where you are. You might need metal, but then if you have metal, you surely don't want frozen water and birds, you know, that can be a problem too. So yeah, the trash can idea is awesome. We have trash can leads um, all over our, not all over, but in several spots in our garden um, and like where our tomatoes are. If you want to not have tomato, if you don't want squirrels biting your tomatoes, they're sucking moisture out, y'all. If you give them water before tomatoes start, that'll teach them to go there for water and you'll no longer have holes in your tomatoes. Yeah, fireflies are like um, like growing up memories, right? I talk, Kelly's talking about the wreath. Yeah, there's viburnum and hips and hyacinth. There is so much stuff that you can um, forge out in your your um, garden. I always thought my sweet William was sad with their long necks. Glad to know they're, that's how they look. Yeah, sweet William, um, they I sometimes try to plant them early just to avoid that, but they really do all right. It's dark and rainy here in Massachusetts. Whew. Is there a pinching guide that you are aware of? Um, no, not a pinching guide. And again, it depends on what your ulterior motive is as far as um, what gets pinched. And I do talk about that. Where do I talk about that? I talked about that in flower farming school for sure. Um, but, I mean, you can pinch any branching annual. Our rule, my rule is I always pinch half of a crop for several different reasons. Hello from Mississippi. Today is 70. Tomorrow will be 50. Hope my seedlings will survive. Have been in the ground for a week. They'll be fine. If you're growing what is winter hardy in your zone, the cold is okay. Um, they benefit from hoops and row cover to protect them from the wind whipping up on the foliage and damaging it, um, but they should be fine. Can I root the pinched off portion of my plants, zinnias? I don't think zinnias root. Any chance you let people in flower farming school late? I'm so sorry, Megan, we do not. I mean, school has already started. We're already into the second week and it's very complicated the way the whole, I mean, it, the, the, the software drips the classes out over six weeks and yeah, it just is too complicated. I am so sorry but get on the waiting list for next year. Mark, as a rule of thumb, what temperature should I put on my row covers and what temperature should I remove? Oh, good, so I can answer that pretty straightforward. So our row covers are always out in the garden, ready and waiting for cool flowers. I put them up, A, either for a windstorm to help protect the foliage, but for cold protection, it's when we're getting down to 25 and 28 degrees, that is kind of my sign that we're really heading into winter and um, that actually I'll be able to leave the row covers up. So when it drops down to the mid-20s is when I put them up and then I will take them down if the days start getting up to 55 or higher. You do not want them to get too hot and grow too much under there. Um, so those are my two kind of go-to um, temperatures, 55 take them down, 25 to 28, let's just say 28, put them up. How do you keep deer out of your sunflowers? You know, we just had seven deer in our yard this afternoon. I was watching them prance across my front yard. Um, I think because I'm in the city and there's so many other better things to eat, I shouldn't even say this out loud, right? They just don't eat our sunflowers. Um, but spray definitely works. Love, it gave your book to my gardening class. Oh, awesome. Question, Buplurum, can't get germination, have germinated and transplanted 10,000 plus seeds, but not Buplurum. Um, we direct seed Buplurum. It does so much better. It really needs cool temps to germinate, and it's a slow germinator. So when you direct seed it, you know, really put it in a straight line, be sure the bed's really clean when you start, Pull the tr make the little trough, plant down in it, um, give it water, and then about 10 days out, and then when it sprouts, it's a dark burgundy color, so you really can't see it. Um, but we have excellent, um, 
I just totally lost my train of thought, y'all. Something's going on outside. I'm not sure what. Um, we have excellent germination with Bupleurum, and Bupleurum needs to be covered with soil. It needs darkness to germinate. So give that a try. But it really needs cool temp. So I just answered that, Tammy. Um, best kind of leaves to use. Well, let's just say what I don't use. We, the only leaves I turn away are magnolia leaves because they're really hard and thick and they become really slippery when they get wet. So we take any leaves. We really love willow oak leaves because they are um, really the long skinny oak leaves and they do beautiful. All right, friends, this is the last one. You mentioned recently um, mulching with leaves, but you also said you don't incorporate them into the soil. I'm confused. Mulching means on top of the soil. Incorporating means mixing it into the soil. So we never incorporate into our soil, meaning tilling it in or shoveling it into the soil, anything that's not a finished cooked um, process like compost or leaf mold. Um, when you put a whole leaf into the soil, whether it's chopped up into small pieces or not, um, the soil then has to get busy and break down that piece of leaf. And that means the soil's not doing what you want it to do, taking care of your roots and growing your plants. Um, so we use leaves as mulch on the surface of pathways, typically. We occasionally will use them in planting beds, but we use the Bio360 film 95% of the time um, in transplanted beds. So mulch goes on the surface. Incorporating means mixing it into the soil, and we do not mix anything except finished compost and finished leaf mold into our soil if we do, I mean, if when and if we do that. But leaves are always used as mulch um, for a long time before they're ever incorporated. Where do you find a bed maker attachment for your tractor? Um, we bought ours from Rainflow, um, and they are up in Pennsylvania, it's an Amish folks, you have to call them. They do have a website and you can download and look at their catalog, but you can't order online. Um, and they're really wonderful, love that thing. Mine is now, gosh, I bet it's 12 years old. Um, works like a dream. All right, y'all, I am, yeah, Holly is a bad idea, prickly. So friends, Reminder, I hope to see you this Saturday from 10 to 12. Y'all, you can like be in your jammies, sipping coffee, and we'll do Christmas shopping together. Because um, I'll tell you, we have some awesome, particularly like stocking stuffers. I'm going to show our gloves and how they fit. My famous favorite sod cutter that I use to cut everything on this farm. Not sod but everything else around here. And um, so I just, how I'm going to share those kinds of tips and tricks. Um, so please like and share this broadcast. That's what helps me the most with Facebook. And if you go to that, that event is already scheduled. Um, would love for you to go to our website, go to our events and share my shopping show on Saturday on your, on your feed. And that'll let other people know about it. That'd really help us too. All right, folks. Until I see you next Saturday. But I'll see you next Friday too, right? Till we meet again, friends. Ciao.